Regardless of your suspension preference, you're going to learn a lot by watching this video. And this is going to be the deep dive review on the Onyx 38. To start it off, this is my friend, John, and he's an absolutely animal on the bike. This is what his Strava account looks like. And he just likes to go super fast and shred a lot. Oh, first impression, super supple, small bump, especially plowing into things at speed. Uh, seems, dampening seems good. It is pretty noisy, especially compared to the Zeb. Feels very much similar to a 38 Fox. Fork was definitely super divey. Just watch the replay. Now I dragged John's extra bike up the hill with a full DBO suspension, but his main bike is a Levo with RockShox. So we're gonna go back to back on a couple sections of trail. Now this is a Trek rail with a full DBO suspension platform. And it was a little bit divey in the front. So we kept playing around with the air pressure to get him dialed. Now there's definitely a strong preference for him to keep on his Levo. And this is the RockShox Zeb in some chundery trails. And now let's check out the DBO Onyx on the same section. Definitely more small bump out of the DBO, but the RockShox is so progressive, it does stay higher in his travel. But stay tuned, because I got a little secret. Pretty similar, uh, really supple, uh, hitting the stutter bumps on the Onyx. Um, better control on the Zeb, especially on the, the lippy step up jump as you thunder down into it so I just felt like I had a little better control through the travel on, um, the, Zeb. on the Zeb but the small bump is good the, the the onyx plows and it thunders uh, overall pretty impressed I think dialing in the air pressure would help definitely much better we pumped it up 10 more psi and it was a little better might have to go up a little further so now here's the main takeaway. The DVO Onyx right here does not jump as good. It doesn't have as much control throughout the travel because it's easier to press down. The benefit of this, it has a lot more small bump sensitivity than the Zeb. The Zeb here, you've got incredible pop off jumps, but you lack quite a bit of small bump sensitivity. And this is a Charger 3 Buttercup Zeb that does not fix the issue. Now I was riding the Trek rail and I was kind of underwhelmed by the performance of the DVO Onyx 38. And then I had to remember how amazing this fork was on my specialized Kinevo. So I had to think about it for a couple days and I realized a fork, a suspension is not gonna fix bad geometry. The Trek rail is kind of an outdated suspension platform and the RockShox Zeb was on a Levo. Chapter two, let's talk about the chassis of the DVO Onyx 38 SL Air Spring. Coming in at five pounds, 10 ounces, it is on the heavier side of other enduro forks on the market. Here's the Fox 38 coming in at five pounds, three ounces. And the RockShox Zeb coming in at five pounds, two ounces. The Zeb is definitely the lightest of the three forks. But let me give you a little insight. The Suntour Duralux weighs five pounds, 13 ounces. If you're counting grams on a 38 millimeter stanchion fork, I'm afraid you're on the wrong suspension. So weight isn't a huge issue till you get into that like six pound range. Keep in mind, depending on how long the steer tube is, the fork will be a few ounces or grams lighter or heavier. So comment below if you want me to compare all those forks. So the DVO Onyx 38 SL at five pounds, 10 ounces. If you get an OTT version, it's probably six pounds. So the rebound and the compression knobs on the DVO Onyx are really easy to use. It's identical almost to a Fox 38, but you do measure the high speed compression in full rotations. As far as using the compression, it only has five clicks of low speed rebound. And Ronnie from DVO told me, if you need any more, you're doing something wrong. And I fully agree with him. It's the most useless adjustment. As far as the high speed compression, it's got a lot of it. So it's got a lot of bottom out control. If you were a big heavy dude or on a short bike, an outdated Trek rail, for example. So one nitpick, you can't feel the turns 
the clicks when you're turning the rebound knob in the clockwise directions, but when you're unwinding it, it does make a solid click. Now, when it comes to rebound, I feel like it's a very responsible range. I'm at eight clicks out of 24. So you super light riders and super heavy riders probably aren't gonna need to get a retune, but it is an option and DVO will help you with that. Now, the DVO setup guide was pretty darn accurate. I think I went up a few PSI and a few clicks faster on rebound, but this will get you so close to the ballpark and it has both forks, OTT version and the SL version. As far as servicing this guy, full teardown, this is every single tool you need. There's all basic hand tools and a couple wrenches. I have a whole video about that. Now the outside paint on the DVO Onyx is definitely a high gloss, high end finish. It's a pretty thoughtful fork. We'll get more into that later, but there's a couple deal breakers on the Onyx. So direct mount 203, could be a deal breaker for you because I only had 200 millimeter rotors and the pad will stick up. The stickers are never gonna come off for life. They're heat transferred on. So if you wanna murder this thing out, that is not an option without painting it. This is Ronnie, the lead shock developer from DVO Suspension. I had some questions for him and his insight. So the first thing he told me is, this is their favorite project of all time. It took many, many prototypes and years to develop. He said there's meticulously engineered upper and lower legs for perfect alignment. I can fully vouch for this because I took it apart. And when you put it back together, the upper and the lower legs, they go together like butter. A lot of forks kind of get stuck together in this portion of the servicing and that can make friction. There is massive bushings in the lower legs of the fork. So he told me these are for longevity and more bushing overlap. More bushing overlap means the stanchion touches more surface area on the bushing, making less slide loading and less friction. He kept telling me alignment, alignment, and it took years to develop their cutouts in the lower legs, even though they look similar or Basic, he said they spent a long time making sure everything was absolutely dialed before they released it to the market. So I questioned Ronnie on servicing the fork. I told him, wow, it was pretty easy to service. And he said, yes, absolutely. I put a lot of effort in to make sure it is easy to service at bike shops and for home users. And I was like, completely shocked because engineers usually just don't give a fuck about fixing something. They'll just figure that out later. It's one of those rare instances where the engineering and the end user mechanic are in harmony with each other and they don't hate each other. On the topic of service, I asked Ronnie, will other oils destroy the DVO suspension? He said, no, they do have an approved list, but you could use other ones as long as it's not the old RockShock branded bottle. Why is DVO one of the last holdouts for a bladder style compression assembly? And he told me, well, we did a couple blind test runs with an IFP fork and a bladder style compression fork. And most people preferred the bladder if they didn't know they were riding on it. So I asked him, hey, it looks the same as the older one. And he said, well, it is basically the same, but we put an upgraded 10 millimeter shaft inside of it and everything is enlarged. It retains the same basic functions because it was good. We didn't need to change it that much. Ronnie went on to explain that their bladder assembly works in opposite to most conventional style bladders. It works on a pressure differential. Basically when the fork is compressed, the oil goes outside of the bladder and it's a little above my pay grade and a lot of sorcery going on. So I'm going to make it real simple. The damping is really good. It's got five clicks of low speed, 36 clicks of high speed, and it really helps those 36 clicks getting it super fine tuned. The main reason for this call was to ask DVO why the fork was perfectly balanced. Like no marketing, I came up with that on my own. So basically Ronnie told me, well, I can tell you. So here it is. They spent years and many prototypes developing the dimple location inside of the stanchion. When we look at the DVO Onyx 38 Airspring, it looks very simple. It looks like it could go in a rock shock domain. So I couldn't figure this out for the life of me. Now the dimple location will tell the fork when to equalize the negative and positive chambers. 
Now there's companies like Vorsprung that will make an upgraded air piston to try to trick the dimple to make it more balanced. But when you buy the DVO Onyx 38, you're just getting the perfect balance straight out of the box. Now DVO has the best customer support in the entire industry. But keep in mind they are a small company so try not to overwhelm them with your dumb questions and study this video before commenting. Chapter 4, I'm just going to tell you my story on the DVO 38. I'm just like an average intermediate level rider who rides a super capable bike. So I bought the Onyx 38 new with 180 millimeters of travel. They will send you the fork with whatever travel you want and I purchased a 170 millimeter air spring. I honestly prefer buying used forks because I don't have to pound a star nut in, but got that all taken care of, mounted it up on the bike, and I was very impressed with the fork's performance on the first ride. It's an excellent set it and forget it fork. So remember, it's a 180 millimeters fork, and this is a very long travel fork. When you have a lot of travel like that, it naturally makes it more progressive, so I didn't need to add any tokens to it. After riding it for quite a while, I was pretty impressed with it, but you know, I always kind of take stuff apart. So I took the Onyx 38 completely apart, make a whole video on it, put some Motor X 2.5 weight oil in the damper because it's super expensive. When I changed the damper oil, I also installed the 170 millimeter air spring and took it out for a ride. Now here's the first ride after changing the travel to 170 and changing the damper oil. And you need to know what this fork sounds like before you get it. It makes quite a bit of noise when you cycle it deep into the travel. So back to my modifications. I put 2.5 weight damper oil in it and it's completely changed the fork. But wait, I forgot, I changed the air spring too. Don't make two massive changes at one time because you're going to get lost. Now the fork is going to need some retuning. I ended up having to add some air pressure and some compression to the fork, but I'm unsure if it's because it's shorter travel or the damper oil, but it may be placebo as well. It felt more plush with lighter damper oil. I told Ronnie I did this and he said, as long as it's Motor X, it's perfectly good to put in the damper. So this is a ghetto way of tuning your fork. If you wanted it more progressive like a Zeb, you could just put 7.5 weight oil in the damper. If you're a whiny bitch who likes his small bum sensitivity, 2.5 weight oil makes this thing absolutely plush. Now, I took this fork out on an all day epic. You know, one of those rides, boring single track with epic scenery. And this should not be your first pick if you're that kind of rider because the DVO 38, you know, it's a big burly fork. It's hard to get this thing moving. It's not quite as nimble as a smaller stanchion 36. Personally, I prefer 36 millimeter stanchions and only about 10% of my riding demands a 38, but it is nice to have that reserve capacity in case you need it. Because DVO is kind of less market share than most other brands, I may compare it to RockShock and Fox for this scenario. So I absolutely love the Zeb on blue flow trails because it makes me jump better. And I love the Fox 38 because it gives me more traction on downhill lines, but I always feel compromised on those two forks. Like one's amazing on blue flow trails. One's amazing on downhill lines. The DVO is just like the best of both worlds. It's not the perfect of both worlds. It's just the best of both worlds. I could not be more happy with the DVO 38 on my Specialized Kinevo. It's a super long downhill oriented bike. But getting back to the front of the video, when I put the DVO 38 on my friend's Trek rail, it was pretty awful. It was super divey in the front, as we can see my friend lurching over the top of the handlebars. This could be chalked up to incorrect suspension setup, which most of the time it is. But this is an absolutely amazing fork for your long travel enduro bike. Now, I feel like there's two camps. One is like diehard DVO and the other one's like DVO is trash. So you've got to watch this video on the screen to find out why DVO is actually amazing suspension. <laughs> 